Hey everyone, I'm Amy Scott. Welcome back to Campfire Stories. Today we're covering the case of Anna Walsh. Anna went missing on New Year's Day 2023. There has been no body found, but her husband, Brian Walsh, has been arrested for her murder. And it can be really, really hard to prove a case where no body can be located, but whoever did this to Anna, whether it's Brian or someone else, allegedly, um, they left behind a wealth of of evidence. And I don't mean to make light of this, but if these allegations against Brian are true, he's got to be one of the stupidest criminals I've come across recently. Um, an attorney spoke to the New York Post and had this to say, quote, if these allegations are true, it's stunning how dumb as dirt this guy appears to be. It's unbelievable. I'm sure some of you guys have seen some of the evidence against Brian on the news and probably kind of rolled your eyes at it as well. We're going to summarize all of that in this video today. And I just want to say before I get started that everything I'm talking about here in regards to Brian is alleged. I'm shooting this in late January 2023. It's possible that things will change as this case progresses, but as of right now, Brian Walsh has been arrested for the murder of his wife. But again, everything I'm saying in this case so far is alleged and has not been proven in court. Anna Walsh was born in Belgrade, Serbia, and she had been working at a hotel when she met her future husband, Brian, in 2008. Brian was the son of a physician, and he attended a lot of like elite boarding schools and that sort of thing. His family was quite wealthy. Anna's mother and her other relatives still live in Serbia. Anna had just been visiting them recently, and I believe her mother was also planning a visit to the U.S. in 2023. Anna and Brian share three children, all boys, ages two, four, and six. They lived in Cohasset, Massachusetts, which is a kind of affluent community about 15 miles uh, outside of Boston. Anna, though, she had a second residence in D.C., and the reason she had this is because she actually didn't work in Massachusetts. She worked in D.C., she worked in real estate and was a regional manager of a company out there. So what happens was she would work the work week in D.C. and then hop on a flight and spend weekends with her family. And we'll get into the reason why it seems they were doing this in a little bit. So Anna and Brian met back in 2008 and dated for several years. In 2014, they weren't yet engaged, but they were heading towards it when Anna filed a police report saying, quote, um, that Brian had made a statement over the telephone that he was going to kill her and her friends. So Anna added that Brian was living in Boston, and I'm guessing at this time she was already kind of splitting her time in D.C., and Anna, unfortunately, for whatever reason, maybe she didn't feel comfortable um, after she made this report, although cops were willing to pursue the case, she wasn't. She stopped cooperating with them and the charges were dropped. But this kind of gives a little bit of context into their relationship. About a year after that, in 2015, Anna announced her engagement to Brian on social media. And then four months after that, on December 21st, 2015, they were married. Another concerning piece of information is that back in 2018, Anna had posted a concerning picture of herself to Instagram because in this picture, she had a black eye. And of course, her friends and family are concerned and they're asking, you know, what's up, Anna? This picture shows you have a black eye. And she just kind of said that she had slipped on the freshly cleaned floors at work and fallen. Brian has been called a con artist online, and at the time of Anna's disappearance, he was actually on house arrest. So I guess he had tried to sell some fake Andy Warhol paintings and had got himself in some legal trouble. And as a result of this, he was on house arrest with just a few kind of exceptions on when he could leave. And this had become a point of contention in the relationship because, as I said, Anna was going to D.C. to work Monday to Friday and then coming home to Boston and Brian couldn't go with her and this created a huge huge problem because you know where do their kids live where do they go to school I'm sure Anna wanted them with her and this was a known issue in the relationship that Brian couldn't go with her to DC and also didn't want her to take the kids with her so we have Anna and Brian meeting in 2008 they get engaged and then married in 2015 and we have those concerning pieces of information around the police report that Anna filed against Brian and then also the concerning Instagram post and also them kind of arguing about where they should be living and I think Anna, if I'm reading between the lines here, being frustrated that they're in this position where her husband can't go with her to where her job is. And then it's New Year's Day 2023 and Anna is missing. 
She was last seen um, during a New Year's Eve party, I guess going into New Year's Day by a friend. Her friend and her spouse were with Brian and Anna at their house for a New Year's Eve party and then they left. And that's the last really verified time that we know that Anna was seen. So Brian reported that she left to take a rideshare car to the airport to head to work. Um, and this would have been normal for her to head out of Boston in the Boston area and back to DC for work. But police have said there's no evidence that she ever got in a rideshare car, that she ever made her way to the airport, and certainly not that she ever got on a plane. Um, so they're immediately questioning Brian's um information here because although he's saying that she left to go to the airport, it's clear that she didn't. Her phone also continued to ping around the house until about 3 a.m. on January 2nd and this also makes no sense because if she had done as Brian had said, she would have taken her phone with her and if I think like just thinking of how we all live our lives and how we're all so connected, if I left my phone behind and went to the airport without it, I would be calling my partner to say, hey, I forgot my phone, you know, just so they're not worried because we live in a, a time where we kind of expect constant contact. And if I was going out of town and my partner had no way to get a hold of me, it would be important to me to phone and let that person know that I was okay and I just forgot my phone. Her cell phone and debit cards have also been completely inactive since the last time she was seen. Um, cops went to their house on January 4th, so a few days after Brian is claiming that he last saw her. And the reason they're there is actually interesting because it's not Brian who reports his wife missing. It's actually her employer. So a security officer from her employer phones and says that they have been trying to speak to Brian because Anna hasn't shown up at work and they're concerned. And this is what prompts the cops to go do a wellness check at Anna and Brian's home. At this point, when the cops show up, they're just kind of considering this a missing persons case. But what they notice is that... Brian's car had the back seats folded down and that there was a plastic liner in the back. And this was kind of their first clue that maybe it wasn't just a simple missing persons case. Later on, crime scene investigators found the presence of blood in that car. Brian said that he had only left the house once between the last time he saw Anna and when the police showed up on January 4th, and that was on January 2nd to get a smoothie for his son. Now, surveillance does confirm this, but Unfortunately for Brian, surveillance also confirms that that's not the only time he left the house. He was also caught going to stores and several nearby apartment buildings, and he hadn't told the police about this, so another red flag. On January 8th, the police searched a trash processing facility, and the reason they did this is they were trying to track down the dumpsters that had come from Brian's mother's apartment. They missed one because the contents had gone to a facility that incinerates its garbage, so they weren't able to find anything because by that time the dumpster contents had been incinerated. But at this other facility, they were able to track down one of the dumpsters and inside they found a wealth of evidence. Inside, investigators found trash bags that contained a hatchet, a hacksaw, towels, and a protective Tyvek suit. So one of those kind of PPE suits that you've probably seen on CSI and that sort of thing. Also cleaning agents, a Prada purse that was similar to one that Anna was known to carry. Also a pair of boots that were very similar to a pair that she had been wearing recently. And then the kicker here, a COVID-19 vaccination card with Anna's name on it. Some items appeared to have blood on them, and upon further testing, they were able to find a mixture of Anna and Brian's DNA on some of these items. Investigators had also found surveillance footage of Brian outside the home, as I said, not just to get a smoothie. On January 3rd, a man resembling Brian Walsh was spotted throwing what appeared to be very heavy trash bags into a dumpster at an apartment complex close by where he lived, and this was also close by where his mother lived. In that video, you can also see a car that is similar to Brian's Volvo. His car has been impounded and it shows signs of being cleaned quite thoroughly. So I'm not sure if they found anything inside that car or if they will, but I think another red flag is the fact that Brian had cleaned the heck out of that Volvo. Investigators had also searched their home and they found blood and some knives in the basement. And they also searched a wooded area near their home and a condo complex where Brian's mother lives, which, as I said, they found that dumpster just full of evidence. 
On January 2nd, they had found surveillance of Brian at Home Depot, and he was buying hundreds of dollars worth of cleaning supplies. Now, he's just not going there to get, you know, some spray to clean the bathroom or even some spray to clean up a paint mess or something like that. We're talking hundreds of dollars. I think it was close to $500 worth of cleaning supplies. A couple days later, Brian was again caught, this is January 4th, going to a Home Goods and a TJ Maxx to purchase towels, bath mats, and men's clothing. And later that day, he also went to Lowe's and bought a squeegee and a trash can. As I said, Anna's remains have not been found, but everything's sort of pointing towards the fact that whoever took Anna most likely killed her. It was on Sunday, January 8th, 2023, that Brian Walsh was arrested and charged with misleading investigators into Anna's disappearance. So at this point, they're not charging him with her murder, but they are saying that he is misleading them. I would guess most likely in regards to the surveillance footage that they found of him outside the house, because remember, he had said that the only thing he left to do was to go get a smoothie, and they know that that's not true. It's on Tuesday, January 17th, about nine days after he'd been charged with misleading investigators, that Brian Walsh is finally charged with the murder of his wife, Anna Walsh. Investigators have said, quote, rather than divorce, it's believed that Brian Walsh dismembered Anna Walsh and discarded her body. Brian has pled not guilty, and right now he's being held without bail. Some of the evidence found, as I said, is just overwhelming. And again, all of this is alleged because Brian hasn't been found guilty yet, but we're talking about the mix of his and Anna's DNA on some items and blood as well. So it's not just the fact that they were both touching these items, it's, it's blood and finding their DNA in these bloody items. There's also the fact that someone who appeared to be him and a car that appeared to be his were found dumping trash bags into a dumpster outside his mother's apartment and all those things are adding up to make it look like Brian Walsh, you know, allegedly is guilty of his wife's murder. But if that's not enough, if you guys haven't heard these yet, I'm going to read them all out for you because they're nuts. Brian Walsh's Google search. So on his child's iPad, his child's iPad, He's searching all these things, keep in mind, and I am not sure how he or his attorney are going to explain this away. And this is going to take a while to read through because there is a lot of searches, but I want you to hear all of them because when I said in the intro that Brian Walsh allegedly is a very stupid criminal, this is what I was referring to. So here we go. And these range from uh, early in the morning on January 1st all the way through afternoon on January 3rd. So the first one, how long before a body starts to smell? Then, how to stop a body from decomposing? How to embalm a body? 10 ways to dispose of a dead body if you really need to. How long can someone be missing to inherit? And this one we're going to come back to because it's important. Can you throw away body parts? What does formaldehyde do? How long does DNA last? Can identification be made on partial remains? Dismemberment and the best ways to dispose of a body. How to clean blood from a wooden floor. Luminol to detect blood. What happens when you put body parts in ammonia? Is it better to throw crime scene clothes away or wash them? Hacksaw, best tool to dismember. Can you be charged with murder without a body? Can you identify a body with broken teeth? What happens to hair on a dead body? What is the rate of decomposition of a body found in a plastic bag compared to on a surface in the woods? Can baking soda make a body smell good? And then, what's the best date to divorce for a man? I think that gives us a pretty good picture of what unfortunately happened to Anna Walsh. And if I were the cops, I would be searching every wooded area around there that I could find. It's just nuts to me that Brian left all of this evidence behind, allegedly. Um, Because you think, and someone pointed out to me, that if you're willing to murder your wife instead of divorce her, you're probably not the sharpest tool in the shed anyways. But it's just like, all so dumb. And I don't say that to minimize what happened to Anna. I'm not saying that I think that Brian should have been a better criminal. But it's just crazy to me that he left all of this behind. Is he that arrogant that he thinks that no one would ever put it together? I don't know. 
And I get that Brian's attorney is only doing their job, but when I tell you that I burst out laughing when I read what they had to say about this case, I'm not exaggerating. Like, they were calling the case weak, they were saying that the prosecutors must not have any evidence, and um, that the way the prosecutors were acting was a signal that they didn't have a case, and blah blah blah. And it's just nuts to me because I get that your job is to defend this man, but how on earth can you go through all of the evidence that I've just outlined for you and say, oh yeah, they don't they don't have a case. It's weak. You know, we've got the DNA from the dumpster coming off of blood of both Anna's and Brian's. We've got him on surveillance footage, allegedly, throwing out large trash bags outside his mother's apartment. And then we've got these Google searches. And how on earth... Do you explain those Google searches away? Like, what reason could you possibly give for those searches while your wife was missing? Like, I I just, I can't even imagine it. Is he going to try and say that his kid did it? Because he used his kid's iPad. And even that is, like, his children are little, like, two, four, and six, I believe. Um, So clearly, it was Brian on that iPad. I don't think you can explain that away. And I would be really interested to know how his lawyer is going to try and get out of that one. Also, one of Brian's Google searches focused on asking how quick he could inherit things after someone had passed. And this is interesting because Anna Walsh had a very large real estate portfolio worth almost $3 million. So that gives us a possible motive, right? Did Brian allegedly kill his wife to get his hands on that $3 million real estate portfolio? I guess the trial will hopefully tell us. The saddest part of this for me is their kids. They're, what, two, four, and six? They've effectively lost both parents, and because Anna's family isn't in the country, they're actually in custody of the state, so they're in foster care. Luckily, a lot of families have come forward offering to take them in so that they can all stay together. And while I'm sure that is appreciated by them, maybe when they're older, they'll be able to appreciate that. Um, I don't know if there's anything you can do to make this situation better on their kids. Like not only have they been taken um, out of the custody of their father, rightfully so, they've lost their mother and they aren't even staying with a familiar relative. And it's just so, so sad to me. Anna's mother also doesn't believe that Brian had anything to do with this. She said, quote, My son-in-law would not do anything to harm my Anna, and I do not believe any of the statements that have so far been related to the possibility that Brian harmed her. She went on to say, quote, He assured me that Anna is fine and alive, and I believe him. I am shocked by the new details that she was allegedly killed because I still hope that she is alive and well. And I think that last part is key for understanding why she's having a hard time kind of grappling with the fact that Brian might have done this. Because in order to do so, she would have to admit to herself that her daughter is most likely gone. She also mentioned that Brian had cared for her a lot when she was in the U.S. So she had come to the U.S. three times for extended stays, which isn't odd when you're an immigrant. A lot of times your family will come and stay with you and and, and your new nuclear family, you know, Anna, her husband and kids, for an extended period of time. We're talking months here. And she said, Not only was Brian great every time that she was there, you know, he was joking around, he cooked for the whole family, and she never saw anything weird, but she said that at one point she got very sick and had a stroke, and it was Brian that basically saved her life, you know, found her having stroke symptoms and probably called an ambulance. And I have to wonder if that has biased her a little bit. You know, she's seen the best side of him. Maybe she hasn't seen the negative side of him, and it's really hard for her to look at this person who, like, no shit, saved her life and admit that maybe he's murdered her daughter. Rob Speyer is the CEO of Tishman Speyer, which is where Anna worked, and he had this to say, quote, Anna's vivacious energy and warmth made her a true friend to so many at Tishman Speyer and in the broader Boston and DC communities. All of us at Tishman Speyer are devastated by the tragic and untimely passing of our beloved colleague, Anna Walsh. We extend our deepest sympathies to all who knew and loved her, especially her three young boys, her mother and sister. She will be greatly missed. And that's kind of where this case is right now. I'm shooting this, I think it's January 23rd today. Um, This is an ongoing case, so it's quite possible there will be more details as it moves through court. Right now, Brian's in jail. He doesn't really have a prospect of getting out before the trial. And unfortunately, their three kids are in foster care. 
What do you guys think of this case? To me, the evidence allegedly is quite overwhelming in regards to Brian. You know, we have the DNA, we have the blood and knives in the basement, we have the car being cleaned and also the tarp inside of it. We have Anna's items being dumped in a dumpster outside Brian's mother's apartment. We have him on surveillance, you know, allegedly dumping those bags and also what looks to be his car. And then we also have him buying a whole ton of cleaning supplies and other supplies that quite frankly could be looked at as being used to hide a body. So what do you guys think? Are you with me on this? You think it's kind of open and shut and Brian definitely did this or do you feel differently? That wraps up my coverage of this case. I hope you found it informative and I'll be back with another video.